one of those really cool things where no project is ever really dead. Feelings on work-life balance. I mean, she's Shonda freaking rhymes, right? Hey guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel. And in today's video, I'm going to be trying to write like Shonda Rhimes. For those of you who don't know, Shonda Rhimes is a titan, as she says in her TED talk. She's incredibly hardworking, talented. She's a showrunner, a mom, a screenwriter, a producer, and she manages millions upon millions of dollars and creates hours upon hours of TV entertainment. With all that being said, Shonda is the first screenwriter I'm going to be attempting to write like, rather than a mostly fiction novelist, though of course she has written a book also. So in honor of her, I'm actually going to be attempting to write the pilot for a TV show. Something that I've never done before, but I'm really excited to try because I think it's really going to stretch me and like help me grow as a writer just from being so different. It'll be like a new little skill set I'm kind of sort of unlocking maybe or fumbling my way through or it could be a disaster. It's gonna be fun no matter what. Anyways, we'll get more into the what exactly I'm writing and the why I'm writing it in a bit. But first up, what is Shonda's routine? How does she work? What is the day in the life of a Titan anyways? I'm so glad you asked. So Shonda wakes up at 5 30 a.m. and rather than kind of like rolling out of bed and immediately going to her desk like I do, I think she has a really like healthy way to start her day and a nice routine. But one thing I should mention is that part of the reason she wakes up at 5 30 a.m. is because she has children and she needs some time from about 5 30 to 7 to be by herself and to either journal or to just contemplate to stare out a window uh, before she needs to wake them up and get them ready. Then at 7 she is having her cappuccino in the morning, she's having her breakfast and she's kind of picking out what she's going to wear for the day depending on what kind of meeting she has. And then at 8 she's doing a lot of like reading and watching of I guess what I would call current events maybe, whether that's from news organizations or Twitter. The article I found and everywhere that I got my information from will be linked down below. But the article that I read actually had like a list of some of her favorite places to peruse at 8 a.m. So I'm gonna use her favorites. And then that same article said that once upon a time she was getting to the office at 9 but recently is trying to push back and get to the office at 10 to force herself to work a little bit less. And I feel like here's where I should take a brief pause, right? Okay. Ooh, I spun too far. <laughs> because Shonda Rhimes isn't really just a writer. And she has a whole talk about how all you need to be a writer is to write. So I think it's like a personal pet peeve of hers to hear people say, I'm trying to be a writer. It's like, no, if you write, you're a writer. And I think that's really cool. I think that's a great way of looking at it and to like build that habit to have that like self-confidence to say you're a writer, so you're gonna do it. I like that mindset. But Shonda Rhimes, she's not just a writer. <laughs> She's a titan. <laughs> she has meetings to run, writer's rooms to be in and out of. Her day is a lot more like in front of people than just sitting in front of your computer or with your notebook or whatever. And that's kind of just her daily thing is not only all of this writing, but also all of these meetings and all of this show running and all of this incredible stuff. I, I, I don't have that, obviously. <laughs> However, I'm going to do my best to like sort of attempt to replicate it, one, by getting out of the house and writing in public for a bit, if only to sort of force the feeling of like showing up somewhere, and two, by hosting a live stream for a couple of hours. In no way do I think this is reflective of what Shonda Rhimes actually does, but this is, this is as close as I can get. And then, I'm gonna write. Now the other part of her routine I really wanna zero in on before I actually get to doing it myself is about her feelings on work-life balance. Perhaps particularly after her year of yes. I know a lot of us struggle with that balance. So after 7 p.m. Shonda actually doesn't allow any emails or calls to happen, nor does she accept any on the weekends. And every night she also makes sure that she's home in time so that she can read to her daughters before bed. And then also before she goes to bed, she actually takes like a notebook or something and writes down all of the things she needs to do the next day. That way she gets them out of her head so that she can sleep. Speaking of sleep, <laughs> it is getting to be about that time for me to get into bed so that I can wake up at 5.30 tomorrow and start to write a pilot for the very first time. All right, I will see y'all then. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I did actually end up writing a page in my journal. And you know, the funny thing is, this is the last page. This is the last page of my journal that's usable. 
and that's really just so cool. There's something awesome about that. But yeah, I just kind of contemplated and looked back over the history of this notebook. <sighs> Yay, it's now 6.50, so I'm actually pretty close to the time that I should be getting my cappuccino and getting food and getting ready for the day. So, this first hour and a half of being kind of contemplative was interesting and nice. Plus, other days maybe I'm sitting here thinking more about my stories, and that would be really nice too, to have kind of set brainstorming idea percolation time. So anyways, I'm just... And this, this will be interesting to see how I do it tomorrow because of course I will attempt this experiment one day when I'm not recording and I'll just, yeah, I'll just see how it goes. Hmm, hmm, maybe I should not go from bed, roll out and immediately go to my desk and start writing. <laughs> maybe there's another stage to be added. It is just about 7 a.m. So I am going to go and in quotes, get the pup ready for the day by, you know, taking him outside into the darkness. Let's go see where he is. Good morning. You ready to go inside? Yeah. Now, as part of my own get ready process, I have my cappuccino, the pup has been taken care of. What I think I'm gonna do is, I posted a video that's going live like 25 seconds ago. I think what I'm gonna try and do is not answer any comments until when I should be working, but I do need to watch it back for a final time just to make sure that everything's okay. So I'm gonna do that and then I'm going to make my bed and I'm going to listen to a podcast while I get the rest of my stuff ready. That's the one we want. Yay! A few characters, as was the case with my school who told Princess Bride story that I wrote during some of the camps. Now seems like as good a time as any to tell you that the pilot that I want to be working on is actually going to be my Scooby-Doo meets Princess Bride story. So during both 2018 Camp NaNoWriMo's I wrote in this story and I, oh god, I love the premise, I love the characters, I love the plot that I have in mind and the twist in, and like, I love a lot of it, but what happened is that I am not skilled enough to write from seven different point of views, which is what this book was going to require. But the thing that makes that great is that it could work really well for TV, where rather than it being me trying to nail the individual like head voice of each of these seven distinct characters, because I felt like I could nail four or three, but I never could get the other ones. I don't have to do that. Like I do, I do, I do have to do that. But a lot of TV relies on this it's a marriage between the words the screenwriter comes up with and the actor's interpretation of them. I wouldn't have to nail it in the same way. And in fact, because none of it will be written from a character's point of view, it's actually going to present its own challenges and that the dialogue that I give the character, the actions specifically that I give the character need to do all of the talking for them. There is no head voice. So this is one of those really cool things where no project is ever really dead, right? We always keep that project, we keep the things we learned, and I did learn a lot from both of those Camp NaNoWriMo's trying to write this project. But now it's gonna be really fun for me to keep this story that I love so much and to get to explore it in a new format and potentially make it better. Or I might find that I am abysmal at writing a TV pilot, but something clicks and I realize actually how I could write it in novel format. So either way, I'm just dabbling. I've always said I'm a dabbler. <laughs> I think this is gonna be fun. So, 724, still some time to get myself ready. <sighs> I don't know what to wear. I have emerged. It's the magic of editing. <laughs> and it is just about eight o'clock now. So I'm going to try to consume media like Shonda Rhimes does. The quote from In Style is, I listen to NPR's morning edition while I get ready and I read The Skim online. It's an informative recap of what's going on in the world, which I actually am subscribed to already. Later, I do a deeper dive into The Atlantic, The New York Times, and The Wall Street Journal. I comb Twitter for fashion and decor buzz. Ideas for my show can come from any of these sources. Again, the 
interesting thing for me as someone who rolls out of bed and just starts working is that all of this stuff that she's doing in a certain way contribute to when she's actually at work. Like all of it is working. It's just a different kind of working than what I usually do. So this is gonna be interesting to see since I usually have an afternoon lull. It doesn't sound to me like Shonda Rhimes has an afternoon lull. It sounds to me like she has so many meetings and so much writing time during the rest of the day that there is no lull she can have. So we're gonna see how this goes. And then here's the skim, it's already there. Okay, Tuesday, October 1st, I'll go ahead and listen to the full show. I'm gonna multitask this a little. Democrats conducting an impeachment- I've gotten approximately 55 seconds in and this is why usually I have specific times I carve out as my news times because a lot of the time news makes me sad. So I try to stay informed, but I need to do it in specific pockets throughout my day. The interesting thing though is that just more and more I think about how I want dystopian to become popular again because that's all I think about when I listen to the news. If I come up with a great dystopian idea, this is why. Oh, all right, it is 8.56 now. I don't know that you can see that. You can trust me, it's 8.56 now. <laughs> I should get to the coffee shop before 10, so I figure this is ish the time that Shonda might be getting into work. And I figure on the way I will listen to script notes. So let's go ahead and do the one with professionalism. We're the only two people, I think, in Hollywood and possibly in the world that have never seen cocaine. I'm not sure it's even real. All right, and now it is time to get to work at my favorite coffee shop. So you, my dear friends, are going into the bag. I ended up just going to the library and working there during that time because my coffee shop closed. I'll flash something on the screen, it was so sad. Being at the library is enough of feeling like I was meeting somewhere or I had to, even though these kind of look like pajamas, but even though I, you know, I kind of attempted to show up somewhere. And now I have two live streams scheduled, one publicly and one for my Patreon. So I'll get kind of a different vibe, one where I'm in front of like, in front of, you know, potentially hundreds of people and one where it's like 10 of us. And I think that'll be a nice, Again, this is as close as I can make it to Shonda's routine. But speaking of that, while I was at the library, I was actually kind of using the Save the Cat book and the beat sheets there. But then something I realized is that this is more for a movie. So like the page numbers are based off of that. And obviously a TV show is potentially more episodic. But then as I was kind of brainstorming and outlining what I wanted from the different episodes or from like the series overall, if I was looking at my show that way. I was thinking it would be more like a mini series, eight episodes potentially, maybe six. And so that actually changes up the beat sheet. So the interesting thing is that Shonda doesn't really outline. The actual quote I've pulled is, when it comes time for me to write, I don't outline and I don't do any of that stuff. I just sit down and write. If it's not honest emotionally, then it's not good and that's my only rule. And I think, I mean, she's Shonda freaking rhymes, right? For me, someone who's learning screenwriting for the first time, really, dabbling, har barely, what is less than a dabble? I'm like sticking my littlest of toes in it. And for me, it's kind of like, you have to learn the rules before you can break the rules almost, or like, because I don't often read screenplays or like the scripts for TV shows, though I've been trying to do that to kind of gear up for this. It's not natural yet, if that makes sense. A lot of it is just me sitting here thinking. And for me right now, it's easier to outline, figure out what I'm trying to tell for the show and what might be needed in the pilot episode and yeah, but it is 117 now and I'm supposed to go live at 120. So the only other thing I want to note before I go live is that because Shonda is flipping through so many different projects and show running, I'm going to allow myself on this first day of Preptober to kind of flip through multiple different projects and then also come back to my own version of 
figuring out the beat sheet slash changing the beat sheet to work for what might be a mini series. <laughs> All right, I have my water, I have my coffee, it's time. I'm going to enter the broadcast studio. Yay! So hello, everyone say hi to the vlog. Hooray! <laughs> All right, and the stream ended 13 seconds ago, we're done. Oh, that was so much fun, and the way I set it up, I have approximately an hour until my next one. Time to go take the little pepperoni out. Time to take a walk break. Oh. Duke, come here. Yes, sir. All right, we're moving into the other room so we can be with the little pepperoni. Let's go, Maddie. Woo! <laughs> And we're done. Oh my gosh, I feel like I got so much done on both of those live streams. So now the only other thing I'm gonna do, because it's now 6 p.m., I'm going to spend this last hour answering some emails, but also answering YouTube comments because I kind of lump those in the same kind of category. But to power me through this last little bit, I'm actually going to make myself a matcha latte. I've already used up both my NaNoWriMo mugs, so I'm gonna have to do something else. I think this one looks perfect. <laughs> the day is done. I had a little bit of relaxing time. I listened to Jessica's live stream while reading and now I'm going to read myself to sleep. Because of course Shonda is always home to read her kids something before bed and now it's time for me to do the same. So let's get to it. The Year of Yes by Shonda Rhimes. You might notice that this is actually the large print version. <laughs> I love that there is a quote that she likely wrote. If you want crappy things to stop happening to you, then stop accepting crap and demand something more. Hello. I'm old and I like to lie, a disclaimer of sorts. <laughs> I'm a liar and I don't care who knows it. I make stuff up all the time. Before you start speculating about my character and my sanity, let me explain myself. I make stuff up because I have to. It's not just something I like to do. I mean, I do like to do it. I thoroughly enjoy making stuff up. Fingers crossed behind my back, flights of fancy make my motor run, shake my groove thing, turn me on. I do like to make stuff up. I love it. Yes. <sighs> and now the only other thing I need to do before bed is make myself some notes for tomorrow. Once again, Shonda does this to just kind of allow herself to sleep. She needs to write down everything she can remember to get it out of her head. So on my list is to be Shonda Rhimes. Well, try to be Shonda Rhimes. Just kidding, my list. That's certainly one way to do it. Wow, I'm tired. <laughs> my list is actually longer than that, including packing for my trip for Chicago. I got to check in to my flight, but also turning the beat sheet that I created today into a mini series. So I want to plot out and have an idea for each of the episodes. And then I think I'll get to writing the pilot. That's the plan. And now I just have to get up at 530 tomorrow. Good night. Okay, so this wrap up is post my two day experiment and also I'm back from Chicago, which was amazing. My video about finishing my Preptober reread while I was there will be up very soon. But I did want to talk about just how different I'm finding the screenwriting experience from the novel writing experience. From thinking in terms of pages versus words and even just the format, things feel a lot more structured with screenwriting, which before I've actually started doing it, I thought was going to be like constricting but actually it's kind of fun and freeing in a way that I wasn't expecting. I mean I'm like actually only two pages deep so but I did come up with this small version of like a show bible, which is again, nothing I've done before for my actual books. And now I do have an idea for the number of episodes I would hope to have, which is seven. And depending on where I look that up, it might be more limited series than mini series. 
I have a lot more questions I feel like now than answers actually as I'm diving deeper into it. But it is a really fun side project and actually feels more hobby-esque than any of my other writing potentially because it is so new I feel like very amateur in it that it really doesn't feel like it couldn't be anything else to me at this point. But also to speak on Shonda's actual routine I wanted to add in something that I completely spaced on mentioning while I was doing the experiment which is that Shonda Rhimes freaking loves using her headphones. This is interesting to me because a lot of my writer friends freaking like some of them can't write if they don't have their headphones and Shonda does it for much the same reason I think all my friends do it which is just to shut out distractions so I did honor that when I was working at the library and then the day that I went to Starbucks that I didn't film but I thought it was interesting to note because of all the writers that I've tried writing like so far none of them I've been easily able to find that sort of information but Shonda it was like headphones 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 <laughs> and then as a final sort of note to merge all of my Shonda research with this kind of like newness into screenwriting is this like money and business aspect I think so I think the publishing industry is recognized as a business but maybe it needs to be recognized in that way by more aspiring authors than it actually currently is. I think there's this idealized version of what the publishing industry is when really it's all about them bucks y'all. Much like it is in the world of screenwriting and tv and movies. I think the difference is just that in screenwriting rarely do you do what I'm doing which is trying to like sort of maybe write out the entire series you know because I'm doing it for fun. When realistically you're having to write you know one pilot you try and sell it if it doesn't sell you don't work on that anymore you try and go to the next one. And to further kind of prove this point Grey's Anatomy was actually written the pilot was written because Shonda found out that the head of ABC wanted a medical show so she purposely like wrote to market and her writing that and submitting that actually came off of the back of a failed pilot episode she'd done about war correspondence because at the time you know the general public wanted more escapist TV. Not to mention that the pilot itself was going to be expensive to shoot. Again, money, money, money. I just think the realities of money and creativity are tied more closely and intricately in like the show business world than in the publishing world even though even though maybe they shouldn't be. Maybe there shouldn't be a disparity there. Companies are after that dough yo. I don't know what that is. <laughs> but finally I do want to leave y'all with this quote because it has been ruminating in my brain since I started this experiment and doing all of my research and it's just because Shonda's a titan it makes this all the more powerful to me and it's a quote that her dad used to tell her and she said that she could like recite it from memory because of how often she was told it and how deeply she believes it's true. Which is the only limits to your success are your own imagination. But that is going to be it for me so please do comment down below. Let me know if any quotes have been sticking out to you recently whether that's about writing or mental health or life or whatever. Let me know if you are a Shondaland fan and would you ever consider writing the pilot of a tv show or maybe adapting a work you've created before into a different sort of medium. Whether that's playing with the same theme you have in a novel and like uh painting that theme or yeah yeah that's my question. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and thank you especially to some of my new patrons this month. Sarah Kimball for the love of story, Storm, Gabrielle Vialba, Alyssa, and Adara Rosewood and I will see y'all all very soon with a new video. Bye! Oh, I see him! Hi! Yeah. Oh you can see my shadow. <laughs> but to summer but to speak on but but also to speak on Shonda's